Option trading is so complicated, so confusing. Yeah. Well, since I'm a designer, I really want to use my design skills, design thinking to tackle this very interesting problem, to introduce, to explain option trading in the simplest way possible. In this video, I'm going to go over the very essentials of selling call options, not buy, sell, what it is, how it works, and give you some examples of how to do it on Robinhood. Music intro. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. Remember that two by two option trading matrix? Hopefully I have made buying calls and puts very easy and straightforward to understand in my previous videos. Links up in the corner and description down below. Today, let's hit the next one, selling call options. I promise this video is not going to have a lot of mathematically confusing graphs or overwhelming content that give you that WTF feeling or too lengthy. I like to keep it short and sweet. Again, hold me accountable. You don't have to smash the like button just yet. Do it in the very end if you find this video helpful, all right? So let's dive right in. So this is what sell call essentially is, all right? So one call option is an opportunity to buy a share of a specific stock at a specific price before a specific date. And if you remember from the buy call video, this actually have the same definition because for a call option, it doesn't matter if you're buying it or selling it, it's the same call option. So the definition of a call option is the same. Sell a call, it means selling a call option contract. You are selling a contract. And this is what a contract looks like. It's, it's the same as the contract if you were to buy one. It's just we are switching the position in this video. You are a seller, okay? You are selling this call option contract. So let's take a look at what's in the contract, right? The number of options, 100, and if you remember in option tradings, it always trades in the block of 100. And it defines the stock, right? It's Apple, strike price, 124, expiration date, this date. So whoever owns this contract, whoever has this contract, that person can buy 100 shares of Apple at this price before this date. So you are the seller in this case, in order to write or sell somebody this call option contract, you need to have 100 shares of Apple in your brokerage account as a collateral, okay? Why? Because in case the buyer, the person who has the contract, decides to use this contract, to exercise this contract, to buy 100 shares of Apple at 124, where are the shares coming from? It's coming from you. So in that case, you were forced to sell your 100 shares of Apple at 124 to the person who owns the contract, okay? So what would you get in this case? In this exchange, you will get the option price, the 128, all right? So you give the buyer this contract, the buyer will give you $128. By selling this call option contract, you are basically thinking the Apple stock is not gonna go above 124 because if Apple doesn't go above 124, which is the strike price, you're gonna keep all of the 128 premium. All right, you don't have to spend another dollar to buy it back or something like that. You're all good. Another way to think of this is you don't mind selling your shares at 124. You're not really attached to your shares of Apple. It's fine of selling them. Then you can sell a call option, stress-free. So now you have understood the very basic, the very fundamentals of sell call. So now let's go to Robinhood and see how you can sell a call on there. So this is the Robinhood web platform. In order to sell a call, you first have to go to the option trading UI, all right? So you see this trade Apple options button here. If you click into it, it's gonna take you to the option trading UI. By default, it's buy call. In order to sell a call, let's say you have 100 shares of Apple, you wanna sell a call, you just have to click sell and everything switched to sell. And if you notice the price, let's say the 124 call is 1.28, and if you buy 124, it's also 1.28. It makes total sense because if you sell a 124 call, 1.28 is how much you're collecting, right? So for the person who's buying it, the 1.28 is how much they have to pay for. So if you want to sell a 124 call, you just have to click this and then continue. You're selling one contract, so it's $128, all right? And then you review the order. And then I don't have enough shares, so I cannot do it. So you can only do it if you have 100 shares of Apple. 
So I've taken a screenshot that is exactly the same thing as what you just saw. Then you can see how this option contract will match the information on Robinhood, right? So Apple stock is Apple, it's Apple. Strike price 124, 124. Expiration date, December 18, December 18, which is typically a Friday. And then the contract price is 128, uh, 1.28, 1.28 because this is the price for each option. And in option trading, if you remember, it always trades in a block of 100. That's why it's 100. So you always have to multiply this number by 100. Then you get the price for this contract. So if you sell this contract, you will receive $128. Going straight to your brokerage account, you can use it to buy more shares or withdraw it to buy some Starbucks or a pair of Nike or some holiday shopping. All right. So how do you make money from selling calls? So you just sell the call and then you'll get the money right away. You sell this 124 call, you get $128. It's very simple, very straightforward in this case. So now let's take a look at what will happen if Apple stock price goes up, which is actually bad news for you. If you sell a call, you actually don't want the underlying stock price to go up. So let's say on Monday, December 14, you sold the Apple 124 call, and then on Wednesday, the price goes up. Hmm, not good for you. And on Friday, it goes up even more to 126. If the market price is above the strike price in your contract. The buyer can exercise it, which means you'll be forced to sell your 100 shares of Apple. So in this case, you will sell 100 shares at 124, which is defined a contract, it's a strike price. But technically, if you were to sell 100 shares on Friday, December 18, you could sell it at the market price 126. So technically, you are missing out that $200 profit, which you can think of it as a loss. So the total loss that you will have this week it's going to be 128, which is the money you collected, you received from selling the call option, but you're missing out $200 profit. So theoretically, you have a $72 loss. But you know what? Technically, you might not lose anything because if you bought 100 shares of Apple a long time ago at an average price of $100, then you sell it at 124, you still make money. Just theoretically speaking, you're missing out some profit. That's it. So now let's take a look at another case. If the underlying stock price goes up, the call option contract price will also go up along with it. On Wednesday, the price goes up. On Friday, it goes up even more. The exact same contract that you sold, the contract price could go up to 198 from 128 on Monday. And then on Friday, it goes up even more to 228. So what does that mean to you? Another thing you can do is to buy back the call to close out the position. Because when you first sell the call, you have an open position. So in order to close it, you have to buy back to cancel it out, all right? So if you really want to keep the shares, you can buy back the call to close out the position. So let's say you buy back on Friday, you spend $228 to buy the call back. So your total loss will be 128, the money that you collected from selling it on Monday, minus 228, the amount that you spend to buy this back. Your net loss will be $100. This is what Robinhood might look like. On Friday, since the Apple price has gone up, instead of showing 1.28, it's going to show 2.28 on Robinhood. So to buy it back, you will just click buy, and then you click this, you buy it back. Or maybe on Wednesday, you were thinking, hmm, it might just go up even more on Friday, so let's just cut losses, done for the week. Then you can buy back on Wednesday, spend $198. Your net loss will be only $70 instead of $100, right? So in this case, you will actually lose money. But the good thing is you get to keep your shares. So in either way, you were gonna lose something, all right? So now let's take a look at what will happen if the share price drops or stay flat or go up a little bit. So let's say on Monday, you sold the same 124 call. And on Friday, this is where the interesting thing about selling calls. It doesn't matter if Apple has gone up, stayed flat, or dropped. As long as on Friday, the market price is lower than the strike price, which is 124 here. As long as it's lower than this, you're golden. So if the underlying stock on Friday is lower than the strike price, you win. You gotta keep 128 all for yourself. You don't have to spend any dollars to buy the call back or anything like that. Another way to look at this is that if you remember the relationship, if the stock price goes down, the call option contract price will also go down. And in this case, the Apple stock price, it doesn't matter if it's go up, stay flat or drops, as long as it's below 124, the call option contract price is going to go to zero. 
So the exact same call contract on Friday. If the Apple market price is any of these numbers, the contract price is going to go to zero. So if you were to buy back the same contract, you would spend zero dollar to buy back. So your net profit will be 128 minus zero equals 128, right? So this is what Robinhood would look like on Friday. The share price can be anywhere. As long as it's below the 124, below the strike price, the option contract price is going to go to zero. So it's going to be zero. Anything above the share price will be zero. So you're guaranteed to keep your 128 premium. All right. So generally speaking, as long as you don't think on Friday, Apple is going to go above your strike price, then you can keep selling costs every week to make some money and use it to buy more shares or buy some Starbucks or some new Nike sneakers or some holiday shopping since we're getting closer to Christmas. All right, guys, we have covered the fundamentals and two practical examples. One when the underlying stocks goes up and one for when it goes down. Selling costs is not that complicated overall, isn't it? Do you understand what it is now and how to use it? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. If you have learned what you wanted, congratulations and hope I earned a big like from you for this video. If you want to see more videos like this, also consider smashing the subscribe button. This will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!